Generally, when we want to put a hole in timber any bigger than the drill bits that we have, we can often be relegated to drill multiple holes, filing the mess that ensues, or we can buy a hole saw which can retail anywhere upward from $30. We might be able to find something cheap if we're lucky, but sometimes this is not an option. This is how I make an adjustable hole cutter. This is Kostor, Jonathan here. So I want to make an adjustable hole cutter. There's probably a few ways that I can do this, but I'm going to look at it like I only have a drill, some bits, some basic hand tools, and an extremely tight budget. For the materials, I'm going to limit myself to 20 mm by 20 mm square steel tube, some 10 mm threaded rod, some nuts, and some washers. For this, I'll need to make a plan. For each of the cutter blades, I'll make them out of threaded rod, which will be 50 mm long, with a cutting depth of 15 mm, and with a cutting width of approximately 3 mm. I want to be able to make two different diameter holes, one 92 mm and one 75 mm. So I need to figure out where the hole is for each of the cutter blades on the square steel tube. And for the 92 mm hole, I calculate 92 mm minus two halves of the cutter blade width, which leaves 89 mm. So the distance from the center is 89 mm divided by two, which equals 44.5 mm. And for the 75 mm hole, that's 75 mm minus two halves of the cutter blade width, which leaves 72 mm. So the distance from the center is 72 mm divided by two equals 36 mm. I need some structure for both of the cutter blades, so I'll add 15 mm on each side making the total length 119 millimeters. So 119 millimeters divided by two equals 59.5 millimeters, which will be my center point. To do this, I'm going to need some tools, a square, a rule, some files, some clamps, a hacksaw, a couple of spanners, and a drill, and some bits. Before marking the square steel tube, I can see a seam on one side of it, and I want to avoid any of my holes going through that side because the bolts will not seat properly. I mark at 59.5 millimeters, which is my center point, and at 119 millimeters. Then I use a square and I mark all the way around the square steel tube. I make two marks on either side of the center point at 44.5 millimeters. I draw a line with a square on each of those marks and I turn it over. I make another two marks on either side of the center point at 36 millimeters. And I also draw lines with the square. And I double check all of my measurements. Then I mark the center of the square steel tube where it intersects the lines. And I rule a line across all of those marks. Now it's time to drill some two millimeter pilot holes to guide the larger drill bit. To stop my drill bit from wandering around the place, I drill a hole in some scrap as a guide for my drill bit. I clamp the guide over the crosshairs that I've made. If I was to have trouble seeing the lines of the crosshair, I can make more precise lines with a scribe or a sharpened up nail. Then I drill all six pilot holes. Now I change to the 10 millimeter bit. I use a drop of oil and I drill all three holes on this side. And I clean up any mess with a file and I repeat for the other side. Now, it's likely that the holes that I drilled for the center are not going to be perfect and might not meet up well. So I keep the best of the two and I make the other larger with a drill bit or a file. I need to clean up on the inside of the square steel tube. There's quite a bit of swarf and rough bits, so I clean it up with a small file. Now it's time to start work on the cutting blades. The nuts that need to go on the inside of the square steel tube are quite a good fit. However, I'm concerned that the seam on the side might make the bolt not seat properly. So I file one edge of the nut so it fits nicely. And I make three of these. I cut off two 50 mm lengths of threaded rod with a hacksaw. And I take off any sharp edges with a file. Now I need to do a partial assembly so that I can sharpen the cutter blades. I put the nut into the square steel tube and I make sure that the filed portion is correctly positioned. Then I screw in the threaded rod approximately 16 millimeters, leaving some room internally for adjustment. I lock it off with a washer and nut and I repeat for the other side. I clamp it vertically and I file off three to 3.5 millimeters, trying to keep the file as horizontal as possible. I rotate the threaded rod 180 degrees. 
and I do the same for the other side. Once it's filed to measure, I rotate it 90 degrees and I file the face side, just enough so that it's flat, but no more than the depth of the thread. Then I file the end so that the face side is longer than the threaded back side. I repeat the same for the other threaded rod and the cutting blades are done. For the last bit of filing, I need to look at the shank of the whole cutter. I have 115 millimeters left after I cut the other pieces off, which is roughly what I need. But the threaded rod is quite smooth rotationally and the chuck on my drill is not knurled and the shank might slip if I attempted to use it as is. So I will make three equal marks on the threaded rod and file the thread flat 40 millimeters on each of the marks on each side. This doesn't need to be very precise, but it does need to be there. Now that everything is filed, it's time to cut the square steel tube down to size with a hacksaw. I tidy it up with a file, I disassemble, and I spray a little paint on the frame of the hole cutter. Then with a marker, I write down the hole size on either side. Now it's time for assembly. First, I want to put in the internal nut and screw in the shank until it's roughly about halfway. Then I want to put a washer and nut and tighten against the internal nut. Then I lock it off from the other side of the square steel tube with another washer and nut. To install the cutting blades, first I install the internal nut and screw in the cutting blade and lock it off with a washer and nut, at the same time making sure that the cutting blade is angled correctly. Then I do the same for the other cutting blade and the whole cutter is done. Okay, let's test this out. I'm going to need a guide hole for the hole cutter. I'm using a 10 millimeter bit and I drill a hole through the MDF sheet. Then I mount the hole cutter into the drill and I put the guide part of the shank into the guide hole. I firmly hold the drill and I start to make the hole. Because the blade has a shallow cut, I rotate the sheet and I continue from the other side. And success, the 75 millimeter hole is made. This hole cutter is also configured for 92 millimeter holes and I should probably test that too. So I put the cutting blades on the 92 millimeter side and I cut another hole and it's done. Evaluating this, both holes were to size, but they were a little bit messier than what I really would have liked. And that was probably down to the low number of cutting blades and how shallow the cutting depth was. While the holes do need to be cleaned up with some sandpaper, they are mostly accurate and the tool has done its job. Sometimes when we have tasks, our lack of tools can be frustrating and it can make it seem like the job is impossible. So it's important to be creative. And if this was useful to you, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate every single one of my subscribers. And if you would like me to do something else, just let me know in the comments. And remember guys, break it till you make it. And I'll see you next time.